Hi everybody and welcome. I am so glad that you're here. Today is going to be a really awesome video because we're going to be sharing a garden design and we're going to be sharing how to make a garden design. So these are going to be seven different tips and tricks. So go ahead and gather your little notepad because it's going to be full of a lot of good information. I am not an expert by no means, but I have been, you know, raised in an environment where all my family my grandparents and you know my grandmothers and everybody they grow their own food and they have a big piece of land that they like farm you know and that we have always grown food lots of crops and so i have been you know encountering that and raising that environment and we don't have i say a farm but it's not a farm it's you know because we only had like some horses and and, and chickens and that's it but you know all my uncles and all my cousins and everybody they grow their own food and we have always had that passion for gardening and then when i went into biology then of course i got some botany and that field you know checking all the fungus and the importance of the microbes and all that kind of stuff and the microbiology when i did that and then of course i had that interest in medicine and medical plants because of my medical degree so that's the background of i am not an expert about doing landscaping and design and all that kind of stuff even though that back 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 in the old days when i was in high school i remember taking a few classes of how to do a garden design how crazy is that but uh, now that we have the house and we recently purchased our house we have been in this house for two years so we have been doing different designs and i'm going to be sharing with you guys so it has been evolving as we go and so I'm going to be showing them the design of how we have it right now and what are the plans and what is it that we're thinking, the thought process of making a design, the design of the garden. And of course, I own the rights for this design that I'm going to be showing with you. So I hope that you guys can get some tips and tricks and some idea and inspiration, but of course not to do the exact same design because of course this was something that we work really hard for it. And... We are sharing it with you guys, Jai's community, because we love you so much. But this is something that we are working on. It might change a little bit and that we actually might use it later on in a book or something in the future, right? So you guys are having total access. Okay, so here we go. So how to design a garden. So the first, first, first tip of all is look at your garden. So you look at your garden, you know, you purchase this home or where you live right now, you want to renovate it, and you look at the garden, you get a feel of it, first of all. And then one of the things that you always need to look at is where the sun, where is the sun? Where is the sun setting at different times of the day? Where the sun, you know, rises, where the sun rises, it's going to be then usually your east. You know, it's always the east. So the sun rises in the east, and then it's going to be setting in the, in the west. So that helps you then to know where you are. Of course, you can also use then a compass. So you can use a physical compass or you can use also your phone. And in the phone, they have an app, which that's what I use. My phone, there's an app. Take then the app and put the phone in the direction that you want. And it will tell you, hey, you're facing northeast, you're facing south. So that's wonderful because there's a lot of plants that they need to be in the south because in the south, there's a lot of sun. And so that's why I have all of my fruit trees and the pumpkins are going to be there because of course that's where you have a lot of sunlight. So think about that first of all. Then another thing that you can do whenever you're looking at your, your environment, the house and the, the place where you're thinking of doing a garden design, also look and feel where the wind is flowing. And so do that in different times of the day and different days as well. So you can see where the wind is flowing. If it changes, where is the pattern usually? So usually the wind flows in here in our house from the west to the east. And that is fantastic because um, I know now that I need to put in a wind barrier in that area. And praise be to God, when we, we got this house, there was already a whole bunch of spruce trees in the west side. So that is already breaking a lot of that wind that is flowing. But in the front, I still have to put some other trees in order for me to protect the trees because if not, it's going to be just, you know, falling everything. So it's important then to check where is it that, you know, you want to plant your trees, you want to plant your flowers or whatever. And also see then what is it that you have around, it, around you because if you have then a huge wind and you had a whole bunch of plants, flowers, and you didn't have then a tree or something that was going to be protecting it, 
a fence or something, a hedge, then that's gonna just all go, go away. Thank you to our neighbors because when we moved in here, our neighbor came into our house and they told us, you know, when they were walking in the garden, hey, you know, you should put your fig tree in the east side because there's, um, because it's protected by the house and the, the wind flows in the west side. So then we confirm it by looking at it a few times, but definitely ha talking to your neighbors, if you had that ability, that is also really good. So that's an extra tip also, check them with your neighbors. And you know, when you're looking at the garden and looking around, as we we're saying that first tip, you can also do the, you know, observing and looking around the neighborhood and around your town. What are the trees that are more predominant? What is it that they're using? What is it that it actually survives and thrives the most in where you are? So that first tip is really crucial, really crucial. So the second tip is what do you have? So, you know, check what you have. When, uh, do you have any grass? Do you have any trees that you like a lot, that you love a lot? What are the things that you would like to change? You know, what do you want to keep? And what do you want to reuse? And what do you want to remove? So, you know, when we move into this house, we, we, you know, we were looking for a house for many, many, many years. We were not the typical person of, of buying a house. This is, you know, it's a huge investment. So we were looking for a house for a long time. And then once we actually settled on the bones of the house, then, uh, and then we moved into a house. We were looking, of course, into the garden and we took a huge assessment into the garden. You have to, you know, walk the garden, check it carefully. So I knew that I love the barrier of the spruce trees. I love that spruce tree laying over there. All those trees are definitely gonna stay over there forever. I love them but I did prune it a little bit in between so I can have like a little path. And that's why you guys see me so many times whenever I do in my Higi days or I'm doing garden walks, you guys see me walking a lot in between the spruce trees because I really enjoy the spruce trees a lot. I love them so much. So they stayed and I just customized it a little bit. So reuse them. I have now a spruce lane over there. I also kept the the Natchez crepe middle in the center, which I love it so much. That was something that whoever, uh, you know, when they were doing the, the landscaping, that was something that it was a win, win, win. I really, really love it a lot. And so I did the design, actually, I did the whole design around that Natchez um, crepe middle. Uh, as you can see over here, I'm gonna show you the, the design more in detail, but you can see that the center is that circle of the Natchez gray middle. And I actually have a video of how to do that circle so that you can grow plants in the, in the center and you know how to do that little hedge. So if you wanna check the video there, I'm gonna link it in the description down below and also over here. So yes, you're gonna see then how to make that little circle, right? So I made the design around that. And because when we moved in here, there was just a Natchez gray mural over there and everything else was just grass and there was no um, perimeter that would give you like this garden, you know, garden little room because I love garden rooms that you can feel cozy and very higgy, right? Very cozy, nice feeling and you feel that even though that you see everybody else, because I can still see the roads and everything, and I can see my neighbors, I still feel a little bit enclosed. So that, I love that feeling. So anyways, we kept those, and we also, we removed then um, the Japanese barberries. So if you wanna check um, that video, and here in the front, um, right in the, this is where we go into the front entrance, and right next to the front entrance, now we have a sitting area, and that sitting area was not there. I created that sitting area. Um, so I was thinking like, you know, when people come over, it would be great to have a sitting area over here. And so I was going to relocate the trees that were here because in here we had a whole bunch of bushes. So it was six bushes that were in here. And when I look at the bushes are the Japanese barberry, which are commonly used. They sell it everywhere. Everywhere there you go, they're selling Japanese barberries. Um, but they are linked with um, Lyme disease because they attract the tick that, um, the ISOs tick. 
that carries the Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria and that can lead you then to having the Lyme disease. So, hi, me being a doctor, then inviting people over and then having right in front of my house in the front door a whole bunch of bushes that has attracting then a whole bunch of deer ticks and that can actually lead people into having Lyme disease. I already met, I have known many people that have been with Lyme disease and I don't want to be a person that it's, you know, potentially creating a, a damage and a harm to another person. So that's something that we decided to remove immediately. So we removed then those six bushes and you can check the video. I'm going to put then the link also and also in the description down below of how to remove the Japanese barberry and what it has been found of how the Japanese barberry are linked to Lyme disease. So there we go more knowledge knowledge is power so when I also you know whenever you're checking at the things that you have at home that you want to reuse you want to keep it's important to also then you know read about it and i know that many of us don't know what type of plant it is so i actually use in my phone when i, I don't know what plant it is i actually use in my phone the app sick s-e-e-k and it's an app that you can just take your phone, take a picture, or just scan it, you know, with the, the app, and it will tell you which plant is it. It's most of the time it actually works. So I would say like 80% of the time it actually works, but you know, it's actually really good. If not, you can also go into forums and Facebook forums, and there has to be a forum for your location. So I'm right in Maryland, Zone 7, so we're gardening in Zone 7. And I actually, when I moved in here, I actually went into Maryland groups and forums and, and Facebook, and I am part of a few of the groups so that I can actually learn from other people and I can actually, you know, give some tips to other people as well. So it's great, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff. So we have said many tips and tricks in this second one. So the second one is to check if you want to remove, reuse, what do you have, what do you want to keep, where is it that you want to be putting a path, what path do you have right now, all that kind of stuff, right? So first, what is it? What is your inventory? What is that you have in there? Then the third, um, you know, tip and trick is, what do you want? Which is it's really important, right? So you you're gonna be putting then your plant list. So I have this little um, pad in here, which is not that little, but I have I have been keeping like track of all the plants that I have been getting and I need to be a little bit more organized, even though that I try to be organized, but I know that I can be better organized. But as long as you know what you're doing, that's why it's important. <laughs> so anyway, so you can put then the, the plant list of the things that you wanna have, um, what are the, the trees that you wanna get, what are the plants that you wanna get, what path do you wanna have, what are the uses that you wanna have in the garden, if you wanna have a vegetable garden in one area, if you wanna have a formal garden in another area, if you wanna have an area for a, a pool, for a barbecue, you know, all that kind of stuff. If you wanna have a volleyball area, you know, in the garden, um, all those things, then put a list, make a list, and then you can start then saying, where can I fit this? Where can I put this? So that's one of the things that I did when I, I came in here. I actually, actually, let me show you the first one. So the first one, because we moved into this house in December 19 of 2019. And that's basically 2020. Like literally a few days later, it was 2020. So I always counted like if it was 2020, but because I am so impatient, immediately I moved in here, I made a design. So I have a design from 2019. And so I have then a design from 2020, and then I have the design, sorry, I have a design for 2020, I have the design for 2021, and I have a design for now in 2022. Okay, so in here, I, you can see the design that I was making, which has evolved. It has evolved significantly because in here I did put that I wanted to put then two cream middles over here which were the coral magic and pink in the side. But after being here, I realized that it would be too cluttered in the front and I want it to be more clean. And so I'm removing those and those are going to be coming in the back. And also this path over here, it didn't make sense for me. Now we have also our cat Cordelia that we love so much and she loves to go and garden walks with us. So it's wonderful to actually have a nice area that she can walk and run. 
So removing those over here, and I'll show you how the design has evolved. And so then this over here, I went a little bit even more crazy because in here, I actually put that I wanted to have a path going to that side and a path going to this side, but after being in the house for a, for a while, so that's why the design just changes over time. So that's good to not put everything immediately you move in because once you move in there, you're gonna see that the uses of what you want, it might change a little bit. So once we move, I noticed that, you know, we have, the house was built with this sidewalk over there, but I actually put this completely covered with rocks along with the sidewalk. But I noticed that I always wanted to walk from the front door and I wanted to go straight. I wanted to keep on walking straight to go into the garden and to walk into the grass. And then I can go around here and go into the front. So in the first design, I actually had, I actually had everything close in the front. But that didn't make sense because I love going outside and not having to walk all the way over here to just go back again to the front and to go get the mail. So what we did is we actually then open it up a little bit in here. And that's why we need to put those two little boxwoods. And now we're gonna be able to then walk in the front and then actually walk outside, which we actually have this already. So amazing, right? And I'm gonna show you then the other entrances that we also changed because there was a lot of entrances that I had blocked in my design, the actual first design. And then after being there, I'm like, wait, I wanna have actually entrances, different entrances. I need an entrance that's gonna be close to the mailbox. I need an entrance that's gonna be in the front for the uh, front driveway. I need an entrance gonna be then to the side of the house. And so I find different entrances that need to be done. And so I need to have then that form, formal evergreen to give it structure as well. So now we're getting, we're getting ahead of ourselves. But yes, check first, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? And then once you have what you want, make a design of what you are thinking that you can, you know, you're gonna make it, how you're gonna make it fit. But you know that that design can evolve. So don't put it like immediately like this is how it's gonna be because it can actually change. Once you actually move in and you have been living there for a while, you're gonna see that there might be some things like it may be that volleyball feel that you want it over here it might be better over here because it's getting a lot of flooding in that side. So that kind of stuff. Okay, so then number four, be practical. And when I'm talking about practical, it's again, basically what we were talking about before, but also there's a big, big trick. When we moved into this house, I had in the front, as I show you, I had this hedge that I was creating and I had a whole bunch of uh, plants, Wigelia, Spiria, whole bunch of plants over there. And I had to remove them all and relocate them because we called this service and here's the 811 number and it's totally free and they come and check in your house and it's a, for checking for electric wires that can be underneath in the ground. Because in here in the US, many of the electrical wires are down in the soil, in the, in the ground. Back in Puerto Rico, from where I am originally from, we have all the electrical wires, most of them uh, hanging in, in this, you know, hanging from one pole to the other. And there's a few in here like that in the US but for the houses, there's some, most of the wires are underneath. So you gotta check that you're not gonna be planting something that's gonna be growing and the root system is gonna get entangled into the electrical wires of your house or your neighbor's house. Even the, the internet, it's also the wire underneath. And there's also propane lines, there's also water lines, all that kind of stuff. So um, when you have them come over, they go ahead and check then all your lines. I don't know by state, but you can just check then in the uh, government webpage and you can check then who is gonna be the agency that they can come into your house and then do an assessment and tell you then what are the electrical lines that you have in your house. So it's checking for electrical lines. So that's important, important, important. So once we uh, did that, 
they actually mark everything and stain everything with a can and then they mark you exactly where is it that there is some magical lines which is amazing and what i wish i would have known that because i mean i was planting so many plants and so many trees so many things and i cannot believe that nobody knew about it and then uh once i i you know i discovered this because there was a i saw a plate in the front of our house that it has an electrical box and it says before you know planting anything three feet close to this call this number so i did call the number for that thing and then they say hey you want to have the whole house also assessed and i'm like yeah sure so then they came in and assessed the whole house and after the whole house was assessed there was so many electrical lines that were close to where I was planting. So I had to remove many things. So guys, if you're going to be planting something, you know, get an assessment of your whole house or where is electrical lines because you're going to save a lot of money, a lot of stress and a lot of labor. I wish somebody had told me this before. So I am telling you now. So please, 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 please go ahead and check where your electrical lines are. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways that is one and of course check then where your septic tank is we have the septic tank also in the on the ground so we cannot plant anything that's gonna be like 10 feet close to it and so also where is your well we have the well system also all that kind of stuff right so you need to first check where everything is so in here for our garden we have right in the front right here here in this side is where we have our well system so i know that i cannot put anything really big like a big tree um right close to it because that can then damage it and then um over here we have our our propane tank our septic tank is over here so there's also some lines that go tubes that go from here all the way to that side so that's why you see that this is going to stay in empty space over here and that's gonna be just a play for, for playing and whatever, and that's gonna be just grass, right? Because we're thinking about, hey, that can cause damage in the future, so it's better to not plant anything in this site, in this particular area. Oh, also check, you know, about the plants you're gonna be planting. When you say be pra practical, also check about the plants, because I know that we love a lot of annual plants, but why? Why do you do that? <laughs> I mean, when I moved in here, it's a zone seven. Of course, one of the things I always check whenever I'm going to Lowe's, because I love Lowe's, going to Lowe's, you go ahead and you check the tag of the plant and you're gonna check if the zone that it can grow, that plant. And if it doesn't grow in your zone, then why are you gonna be buying that plant? So that then you can, it's gonna be acting as an annual. It's gonna die in the next year. You have to redo it all over again. So I have never understood that concept of planting plants are animals that you have to keep on breaking your back and your hands and keep on, you know, doing it over, over, over again. So I'm all, I'm working but to each his own, right? So I'm working on putting everything perennials, plants that can actually survive in my environment, plants that I, I can be, you know, evergreen per perennials or it can be deciduous per perennials, but they're gonna be perennials that are gonna survive my environment and they're gonna come back again every year so i don't have to worry about replanting it the only thing that i have to worry is about propagating it and reusing them and keep on having more and more from one plant you get multiple of them so it's totally free it's so amazing so you have double benefit and then also check the plants if you have problems with your with deers or whatever you can actually check for plants that are gonna be deer resistant so be practical when you're buying something. If it's not gonna be a benef benefit for your garden, it's not gonna grow well in your garden, you're wasting your money, don't even get it. Don't get it at all. Don't get it. Okay. Then number five, what will your design be? So whenever you, you go into gardening, I know you, I know what we all do. We go into Pinterest, we go into YouTube, we go into Google, we go and check in different images and images and images and videos and get some inspiration from other people's garden. And that's wonderful. And then you can get from that, then the design that you like the most. So I like a lot the formal garden. So I know that I use a lot of that evergreens to give it that, 
the bones, the structure of the garden. But I also love the concept of permaculture. And so I, I grow very naturally. And so I don't grow with pesticides or with a lot of fertilizer. I don't put no fertilizers. I don't use no insecticides, um, pesticides, any of that. And you can check the, the video of, um, you know, how to make your own natural um, insecticides and fertilizers. So I'm actually going to put the put in the description down below. Maybe I'll put it over here as well. But it's going to be definitely in the description down below in the comment section as well. And if you want to get inspiration on the garden and you can see the garden, how it started, which was nothing, you can check the playlist of the garden walk in the garden walk uh, playlist. You can definitely see the progress of how our garden has been evolving. And again, we have been in this house for two years. So it has there's a lot still that we need to do. Okay, so um, for that design, for, uh, so check if you know what design you like. And in my case, I am doing edible landscaping, permaculture, a little bit of that English garden with that formal feel. So it's a blend, a blend. But you can, in the front of the garden, in the front of the house, it looks more, it's gonna look more formal, but it has a lot of food as, as well in it. Because if you go into the front of the house, you're gonna see that we're gonna put those, t um, we already put it, the two Italian cypress. We also added then the emerald green arborvitae for having then that structure. And then we also move the holly bushes, which are gonna grow pretty big. And we're gonna give it then that round um, structure. So we're gonna cut it that way. And it's gonna give us then that evergreen, that feel that's gonna be very formal. And you can see then that we have also some evergreens in here. We also put some evergreens into the side. We have the benefit that our neighbors have this evergreens um, in this side and dividing, which are amazing. I think our cypress. And then also we have then our beautiful, um, sorry, this is, this is actually our beautiful spruce. And then this is what we planted as well, some cypress, some junipers. We put in some blue point junipers in that side. So I love the evergreens for the back bones and giving you that form of. Then number six, plant what thrives in your area. So we already mentioned that. So this is, we're, we're repeating that. So you already know, plant what thrives in your area. Check them by zone, what zone you are. If you don't know what zone you are, you can actually then just put it on Google. Uh, how do I know what zone is my garden? And then it will give you then a, a link and you just put in your zip code or your address and it will give you then exactly what garden zone you are. So then number seven, start drawing, envisioning, and then checking also the texture, the color, the bones, uses, entering, all that kind of stuff. So um, when you're talking about the envisioning, you wanna know about the seasons, right? So in Puerto Rico, everything that you plant if you're gonna be planting something that's gonna be then you know for the zone and usually the zone there's it's only 11 then it's gonna grow the whole year because it's tropical plants and they usually stay the same very consistent but in here in zone 7 depending on if you're in spring if you're in autumn if you're in in, in fall you know autumn fall if you are in in winter then they change different colors and so whenever uh, we're planting something that's something to look at so for example the Natchez tree in the center which you know that I love it so much it's um, it gives you in spring at the end of spring well at the end of spring yes yeah, so at the end of spring almost May all the way to the end of summer it gives you a whole bunch of flowers in white beautiful flowers like amazing and then when you have um, the autumn, it's gonna change into like this, the leaves that change into this orange brown color, really, really, really pretty. And then whenever it's just, it's in dormant season in winter, you, I love how you have these berries that stay in the tree the whole year. So you have some interest all year long. And then in this tree that we have over here, that it was already here, the maple, I love that maple tree, how it looks. It's an orange maple, it looks fantastic. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. I love also, I mean, there's so many things in here that I love, but everything that we have over here, it, it's a perennial, so it has different colors and it has 
different textures and you know everything's just fantastic 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 and when i talk about texture i mean the holly trees for example the holly trees that we have in the, here in the front they are this dark green with this beautiful um berries um, the the red berries that comes in winter and they're just amazing and then the texture is like almost like plastic and the 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 arborbitae that we have right here those are probably tied that are in each corner of our house. They just look amazing. They look like they were fake trees. So, I mean, that, that you gotta look at it. Look at what you really wanna look at every single time of the year, right? So think about that. And then number eight, just enjoy the process. <laughs> so, and always remember that the soil is the most important thing. So, you know, if you don't have good soil, you're not going to be able to thrive. So, so let me share with you guys the design now. And you can see then what we have been doing, how it has been evolving. So when you make a design, it doesn't need to be like super amazing. You are the only one that needs to know what is it going to be in there. And if not, then you can get some help. You can go to a garden center and you can check then if there's a person that can help you make a landscaping. Or of course, you can hire the landscaping company. So I love, I'm not an expert by no means, as I mentioned before, but I love drawing. I love doing kind of stuff or learning. And I have been in my family always growing our own food and gardening. So this is something that it's my passion. So over here, I'm gonna just start, you know, adding color. You can see that I look first, as I, we mentioned, we want to check what, where it's going to be your north, your east, your west, and your south. So when we got here, we saw that the sun rises then from the east, which is over here, and that it sets then from the west. And so we had the most sun over here, which is the south, and then over here is our north. So we have our south, north, east, and west. How amazing. And so we also noticed that the wind was flowing from the west. So from the west is where we're getting the most wind. And so we needed to have then a wind barrier in this side. So praise be to God, when we move in here, we had then all of this wind barrier that was already planted in here because we have this big spruce trees. So we kept those spruce trees as I mentioned, and the only thing that I did was to prune some of them in between so we can have then a spruce lane and I can walk in between the trees, which I love it. And you guys have seen it a lot in, pre in previous videos with the Higi Day videos, which I'm gonna put in the description down below, a play the playlist of the Higi Days. And I'm also gonna put the playlist of the garden walk so you can actually enjoy that and get some inspiration. So we put then in here, we started then also planting some trees. As you can see, we already have some trees in here. I only added then the, um, the, the holly, because we had in here in the house, we had a whole bunch of hollies really close to the house, and those holly bushes can grow majestic and huge. So we wanted to actually take advantage of those hollies that we had already here and we relocated them. So I put then one, two, three, four hollies that were attached close to the house. I brought it then, relocated them in here, just dig it out and use it in here. So no money spent in there. Just a little bit of hard work of removing what is in there and put it in here. So use what you have first of all. And then I used then another holly, it's over here, and I think that I have another holly over here. Let me add this over here as well. So we have two hollies because there were six. So we have two, four in, the, in here in the front, and then two over here, so we have six in total. And so um, these are gonna be the Italian Cypress. So we have, I'm gonna go with the green color. So we already talked about the hollies, which are gonna give you that evergreen and form of feel because they're gonna be the backbones. So when everything dies during the winter, I can still enjoy that beautiful color because they never die and you still enjoy that green foliage all year long. We also have still some hollies over here in the front. So we have three hollies left in there. So I will, um, 
We also have this emerald green arborbitae. So when we move into the house, there were already in almost each corner of the house, this emerald green arborbitae, which I love the texture of it because it looks like plastic and you have seen it that I have used them a lot for Christmas decor. And so those were there and we just planted this ones over here, our babies, then they have been growing little by little. That's another thing to check your budget. So I know that I can grow this um, arborbitae and buy them, you know, really big already, which is gonna be a few hundred dollars. But if I go and buy them in small, I might get them on sale, which I think I did for like $7. So $7 versus $100 is a big difference. So just let them grow, they grow pretty fast. And make sure in our case, we're having the, the emerald green arborbitae, not the green giant. The green giant grows humongous. So it would not be good for having it as a column. And then over here, we have the Italian Cypress, which this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite in my list of plants that I wanted to have. As I mentioned to you guys, check the list of plants that you wanna have and see if you can actually have them. I had my Italian Cypress. That was one of my things that I really, 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 really wanted. So I love Italian Cypress. So I have been incorporating it little by little. So we have then two in the front to make that entrance. And then um, I put also some Italian Cypress right here next to the driveway. So we have three of them. And um, we recently got a few more over here. Once I, we, the, the weather gets better, we're actually gonna be planting them. So I'll show you then that because there's a little garden maintenance that we need to do. And we already have one over here. And so the dream is in the back also to it add some Italian cypress. So over here in the back is where we're growing our orchard. So we have um, so far 22 fruit trees and we want to keep on adding more um, because in the, in the first design we had that we were gonna put a fence. This is the, the one of the designs. So we were going to put a fence around the whole garden, but Justin does not like to see a fence. And so um, in order for me to keep then a lot of the deers and everything out, I'm actually gonna be doing a natural fence. So using then the trees as a hedge. So the trees are gonna be, um, we're gonna then add them you know, attach them one next to the other and make them like a, a spalier. And that will help me to have then structure, design, and also help with the deterring the, the animals. Plus on top of that, we're gonna then put in the front over here, this might be either a hedge that could be a choke berry, which you can use in those berries, or the gardenias, which I love the gardenias, and I'm really, really obsessed with the gardenia. I love them, love them so much. So we recently, we last year we got a, a gardenia, and we have it. We got it right before um, it was gonna be winter, so we actually haven't seen it bloom. So I'm looking forward to that this year. So my dream is to actually have the gardenia over here in the front. And so it's a tiny little thing that we have right now, like this, right? So a tiny little thing. And that will be propagating and propagating and propagating and propagating it. Unless I find a few on sale and then just keep on adding. Because I'm telling you guys, I don't like to spend a lot of money. I And if I am very patient when it comes to propagating stuff. So if I can just have one thing and keep on propagating it, I'm going to be doing that. And it might take a few years, but I'm okay with it. So... The dream is to have then the gardenia growing over here and those are gonna be then the evergreen which looks fantastic. Plus then it grows like beautiful flowers that you get in, in white that you get to enjoy and they smell amazing. I mean, haven't you had a perfume that smells like gardenia? It smells fantastic. So imagine having then the front of your house with a whole bunch of uh, plants, a hedge growing of gardenias. It's fun. Fantastic, right? So that's one of the things that I have in mind as a as a, a project for it to keep on propagating. And so if that grows very well, then I will take some of that propagation and I might actually then pass it along into this side 
as well. So then I will have also all the hedge around the orchard with the gardenias growing. If not, if not, the second option will be then the shokeberry. And the shokeberry, we actually are growing it right here next to the driveway. So we have this in the back. It's actually a whole bunch of shokeberries that we're growing again. I am very patient and so we have just a, I think it's one, two, three plants that we have and they're tiny and they're growing little by little. So once they grow pretty big, they can grow to like three to four feet almost if you let it grow and they expand and keep on propagating pretty quickly. So I am sure that we're going to be able then to have this with the praise of God, of course. And so that we can actually have that little hedge over here and we can actually use all those berries and eat them. So it's amazing. Then, of course, into this side as well, either the choke berries or the gardenia. So keep on propagating. So that's going to be a project of love. All of that, all of that, all of that, all of that. And these are just the spruce trees that I mentioned to you guys before. So I'm putting all those evergreens, painting them in here. Into this side, um, the devices from our, our the neighbor, we didn't have nothing, nothing at all. Nothing was in there. But of course, I wanted to have some division because, you know, when the neighbors are doing their activities, I wanted to also have our privacy. And I also want to have that cozy feeling that I was telling you guys and also to protect our garden from any, you know, any things that are going to be coming from from their garden. So let's say any animal or anything. So you have a little barrier over here. And so and also they like to play with their soccer ball and so that helps also to stop the ball to coming into all the vegetables. So over here we have then the Blue Point Juniper, which I love them so much. I love, love, love the Blue Point Juniper because it's not a typical green color. So it's a, is that the word I told you? So it's like a bluish color. It's really, 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 really pretty. So there's going to be a whole bunch of color coming now. <laughs> it's going to be really cool. And then all of our, our amazing neighbor in the back, they already had a hedge over here protecting that is um, from cypresses. I don't know what kind of cypress, but it's really big and they're already screening really nicely. So we already have that screen and privacy from the neighbor in the back because they already had this over here set from years ago since before we moved into the house so praise be to god for that so now we have that evergreen already done um, we have over here also a little dwarf spruce tree and we have then the other evergreen and in here we have a spruce trees but i think that this spruce tree we might change it because i remember when they did the assessment that i told you guys that whenever you're planting something always check if you have any electrical wires uh, running uh, underneath the ground. So when they did that or running if um, to check if there was any electrical wire, I remember that there was some electrical wire close to this tree. So I think that I'm gonna be removing that tree because even though that looks pretty over there, you don't wanna have any problems in the future of damaging any, any electrical wire that is running to your house. So it's better be to, save, to be safe than sorry. So I'm so I'm gonna be removing. I'm gonna be removing that as well. Then over here, you see that we have then this boxwoods. Um, now we have different boxwoods. Um, these are gonna be the green, the green mountain boxwoods. So they grow pretty big. They grow to four to four to f almost five feet tall, and so and they have the conical shape, so you don't have to worry about cutting it. So those two are gonna help us to have this entrance, because as I was telling you guys in the in the previous design that we had done, which has evolved, in the previous design, you can see that we had this entrance over here and then we have another entrance over there, but there was no entrance to go from the front door to the garden. So that, when we actually moved in, we went ahead and we had this, the sidewalk that was already here and then we made this path in the, in the uh, along the sidewalk full, full of rocks and lots of beautiful plants but we are not able then to walk straight over here so we have to you know um, put a leg up and then 
try to not squash any of the plants and then go into the grass because for whatever reason we don't like to just walk all the way over here and then walk back again to the garden it makes sense to just go straight into the garden so you always have the feeling of just going straight into the garden so that's why we customize it then into just walking straight into the garden and then we're going to put this two box which we already have which just that the weather hasn't been the best so once it gets a little bit better more than 60 degrees i'm going to then start working in the garden because i do not like to work in the garden when it's like 40 degree weather it's too cold for me to be outside so we're going to put that and then also this is going to be a labor of love over here of putting then a hedge of a whole bunch of boxwood which are going to be the same boxwood that we have over here which is the winter gem boxwood and they grow really pretty and small so they are going to be propagating in this side because we already planted i believe like 10 of them and we just need to keep on propagating it so i'm going to keep on propagating the ones from here and also reuse them over here as well so then we have then that formality and then this is the the other um, boxwood that we have over here which is the green um, mountain boxwood that I mentioned before and that green mountain boxwood we're using it for that entrance we're using it for this entrance over here and we're using it also for an entrance over here as well so then we have three entrances that were that I actually did not have in my previous design I did not have any entrance over here I mean I had a word for entrance but I didn't have nothing over here done I didn't have no entrance at all in here and I didn't have no entrance at all over here so now I have then an entrance over here so this would be them for the entrance and I have then an entrance over here and I have then an entrance over here and I have an entrance over here so that's fantastic and that is something that I evolved once we moved into the house and we have we have been here for a while then that's when I realized that hey I needed then to have some entrances because I feel better just walking straight over here and going to the garden as I mentioned before the garden it has actually revolved around this thing so it revolved around the the Natchez crepe mural so the Natchez crepe mural that we have in the center it's really majestic big beautiful gives you then this white flowers from spring all the way to the end of summer then you have this beautiful colors in autumn of orange you know the orange leaves almost brown really pretty and then you have the berries that are going to be in the winter so i really 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 love this one it was already here when we moved but it didn't have the circle so you can actually check the video of how we made the circle and the plants that we have inside the circle right so we have a lot of the um, we are growing actually mint society garlic over here you can check the benefits of society garlic there's another video that i made uh, also we have candy tuff we have also the balloon flower we have all kinds of stuff um, we also have sage all kinds of stuff over here growing and then as you can see here around we have many of i'm gonna put it in yeah it's blue it's almost purple but we have in here lots of this um, irises that are actually like a purple color and some of them are in yellow and so those they grow like weeds they grow so fast and thanks be to God and praise be to God that they were given to us um, by a friend uh, the the mom of one of my friends that she is amazing Miss Linda so thank you Miss Linda so much I have I always thank her for that and so I would love, we already have a whole bunch of them over here and we have a whole bunch of them over here that we have been propagating, which is crazy. And we're going to continue them propagating. So I would love then to not only have them over here, I would love to also have them in the front as well and just keep on propagating and having them all throughout the garden. There's something about having in the garden a plant everywhere that like makes the garden to like come all together so even though that you have different parts and different functions and even other plants when you see that you have the same plant again repeating it helps you to like oh yeah it, this is like all not a, not not clutching everything like makes sense so that also would like to have it then over here as well so many of them just putting them in different sides right so in here we also have like 
a whole bunch of different variety of plants in there. We have then the Monte Daisy, we have tulips, we have lilies, we have lady speedwell, we have so many things in there. So there's a lot of different flowers that we have over here. Of course, we're gonna leave them that little space over here. Then we also have the azaleas in here, which um, they're, they grow in white color um, and they're really, really pretty and they bloom for a long time. And we only have one that is pink. I don't know, it's really weird. And then I'm gonna just paint this in, in this orange color, but we know that it's most of the time is, is blue, is um, white color. Then over here we have also um, the heavily bamboo. So in here you see that we have those um, electric boxes. So as I mentioned before, whenever you're doing the design, check what is it that you have. We have a well, a well over here, so you cannot plant anything that will be like really big trees close to it. So this, even though that you see that you still have a bunch of plants close to that, I mean, it's not exactly that way you have distance. So there's a, a, a big distance, a few feet away from it. What I planted in here was a whole bunch of the, the pampas grass. So we grow a whole bunch of pampas grass, which are really, really grow really big and tall and really majestic. So that helped me then to, to cover then the, the pump of the well. And then um, we're gonna be planting also another extra bush over here. We already have over here the bur butterfly bush, which grows really big as well. And it, it blooms for a long time. And it gives you those purple flowers that are really pretty. So then you have color as well. So not only you have then the color of, the, of that yellow brown color from the pampas grass that you're gonna be getting over here, but you also have the color that you're getting from the, the butterfly bush. As well, we have been growing in the back. We have been growing, and you can see as a hedge, is everywhere over here. And it's gonna be in red, which is the burning bush. Now the burning bush, you gotta be careful with the burning bush because it is in, um, very invasive in many places. So, you gotta make sure that you're gonna be, you know, cutting it, making sure that it's not gonna be having too much propagation. And so that is something that we're just gonna have a little bit in the front. And that's it, because I just like that color to give it a little bit of red color against that white color that we're gonna have with the gardenias. So that's something that we're propagating and letting it become a hedge in the front. And then in here, you see that we have some trees. So this is an oak tree that we have over here, another oak, um, oak tree over here, and then we have a maple tree, a maple tree. I forgot to actually, I forgot to actually put this over here. This is an emerald green that we planted, an emerald green that we planted. And again, those are cheap trees because we actually grow them small and they're gonna be growing little by little. And then in here, we planted in the back, in this hedge that I mentioned that we had already the Blue Point Juniper, we also planted then the Chase Tree. With the Chase Trees, they grow pretty big and they are very, um, very compact because they already give you that little like round top, top that you don't have to worry about cutting it. And of course, I didn't wanna grow anything in here that I have to worry that I have to cut it so all this over here i don't have to do no maintenance and everything in my garden once you plant it no maintenance okay so that's what i love about having plants that you know your zone you know what can grow and i don't like planting them annuals i like to plant them perennials so that they are going to be there forever and come back again every year and they're amazing so you don't have to worry about doing nothing a little bit of work in the beginning of making sure that you have your landscape design that you want. And then after that, it's done forever. So over here we have then the chase tree. And the chase trees are really, really cute. They grow into a, they give you this purple flowers in the tree. Like how amazing is that? To have a tree that's gonna give you this beautiful purple flowers, like amazing. And they smell, oh my God. So this, this design, you know, I'm thinking about food, I'm thinking about color, I'm thinking about texture, I'm thinking about how they're gonna be looking during winter, and I'm thinking about my senses. What is it that I want 
in the garden so over here this chase tree they're gonna smell so good so when i'm walking over here in this little bit of wind i'm gonna be like oh my god what is that sweet smell i love it and it's gonna be that chase tree and then over here the gardenia smelling so good so i don't have to worry that i'm gonna be smelling any any uh, crazy pee of the dogs or anything because in here we have a road in the front so dogs people that walk their dog i don't know what is it they don't they don't uh, they don't understand that you cannot let your dog pee in front of my house but anyways yes so now i'm not gonna smell any of that only the gardenias <laughs> So that kind of stuff, you gotta be thinking about that when you're gonna get something. Then, okay, so we have those colors. I'm thinking in the future, maybe having a sitting area. So a sitting area over here, sitting, sitting area over here as well, because I love just sitting and looking at the sunset and it just looks so beautiful. There's lots of different plants in here. We see that we have the red twig dot wood in here. So it gives you also that red, beautiful color. And then also you have the, the leaves are, gr are grow so abundant and in, in green color. And then you have this tiny little white flower. So, of course, as I mentioned, you know, having those colors and varieties. We also have lots of hibiscus plants in here that are really beautiful, different um, varieties of hibiscus. Um, in here, we also have um, lots of blueberry trees. So we have, I think it's four blueberry trees um, so far. And as you can see in the garden, I'm putting stuff that it hasn't even been in the garden yet, but it will be for the future. So that way I don't plant it in there. Like I'm thinking maybe in the future, the office might have then a path over here. So I'm not putting nothing in there um, over here. Maybe in the future, having then another garage over there. So I'm putting it over there. Um, maybe in the future, having then also a sidewalk over here. So I have then the fig tree because we have this turkey fig tree that it comes from the apartment is growing so majestic so it's right next to what where it would be then the sidewalk um, and then over here yeah this over here in the back that patio is not done either this is like in the future whatever we, we might put in there and then this over here we're going to leave it empty because of course as i mentioned we have also some lines of the septic tank that are running over here so that's something that you need to make sure what is that i have underneath my grant on the ground and so that will be uh, a great space to use then as an empty space to play. So it comes in handy. And then over here, you see that we also have this um, Golden Globe Arborbitae. That they are actually this green, yellow color, which are really pretty. I love, love, love the Golden Globe Arborbitae. So we have four of them, which are giving you that structure. But also you have in the front a whole bunch of kale. So in here, I have a whole bunch of kale growing. I have over here, um, I grow usually tomatoes and eggplants. Um, I grow the last year lots of squash over here, and I plan to grow more squash this year. This we have then the fig tree, as I mentioned before. Over here, we are growing the blackberry um, vine, which I love it so much. We're growing also a kiwi vine over here. We are growing lots of different vegetables, strawberries. We're growing um, fruits, also strawberries. We have mint, we have cabbage, we have lettuce. In here, we also are growing in the center between the basement entrance and in the wall. We have a little soil area. So in there, we're not leaving it empty. We're growing also some squash in there. And in here, uh, as I mentioned, lots of the blueberries. And in here, we're actually um, we have planted already the coral magic, the coral magic, um, coral magic cream myrtle, which it grows with this pink color flowers. And so we had those two as well repeated in the front, which is the one that I had in this design. I had it in here in the front, but it was too overcrowded over there. I realized that, you know, it would be better to have a path of green another path of green that you can walk, that you can run, that you can do activities and you don't have to worry that you're bumping into multiple trees, especially when you're cutting the grass, also comes in handy. So removing those trees and just replace, you know, not replacing it, um, then putting it, relocating it in another, another side. So those trees, instead of being here in the front, they're gonna go in the back. So now you have this four, four. So you have then the crepe, the 
yeah the crane mural the coral magic crane mural also over here so you have gonna have four and four we have a few trees i know that there's a, this italian tree i don't remember the name but i know that i have an italian tree in a in a, in a pot that it grows pretty big and i want to have it then in the back it has a shape like a pine tree i don't remember the name but it's pretty cool and so i want to put it then also over here and then if i have another tree that it can grow pretty big as well and it can be also another cool shape i'm going to put it then over here as well so then you have like this court feeling in here and again giving you that cozy feeling as well we also have a tree already over here i believe it was a maple and then everything that we have in the back is going to be then for all those fruit trees and then wherever you see those little evergreens that's going to be the entrances so i know that i had the entrance for here but i didn't have an entrance for the side and i noticed that when i'm walking in here it's pretty big and I feel like, oh, I, it's so tedious that I have to go from the inside, walk around and go back again to the front instead of just walking and going straight in wherever I am. So now I have that entrance over here and I have that entrance over here as well. And then we're going to have the, the main entrance as well. And then wherever you see those arches, this is an arch then with grapes. I think this is an arch then with, um, I don't remember, I think it was the kiwis. And then this arches, which are going to have then a table, my dream is to have a really long table in the center that we can fit a whole bunch of people and so that you can, whenever you're hosting an activity or something and you want to have everybody in the garden and they can enjoy everything around you, that they can be underneath this canopy with roses. Um, so we already planted the, the yellow vine roses. And so we just need to then in the future make then this canopy over here and then have that that custom table in the center and then lots of fruit trees lots of fruit trees and as you can see this is going to be then a vegetable bed vegetable bed and then you can put an arch an arch an arch and when you're walking you can actually walk underneath the arch and then you keep on going no, exactly keep on going and then you have bed bed you can walk also underneath the arch and then go into the other side so it's pretty practical and pretty at the same time. So everything that you see over here, as I mentioned, I have that design in mind of beauty, texture, time, and time, and then also practicality of having that edible landscaping. So I hope that I inspire you with my design. Remember that this is the design of Jolly from Jolly's community, that I own this design, I made it, suffering in there just looking for many hours so you can get lots of inspiration but remember to give also credit if you're actually doing any inspiration from whatever you got from here and that we love you so much and never never to copy immediately exactly the same one now we finished with the whole garden design and sharing all the little tips and tricks and lots of the things that i have over here i think that i told you almost everything and i'm going to put many of the videos and playlists that i mentioned i'm going to put it there in the description down below i'm going to attach it also um some of the spaces in the in the video and also in the comment section down below as well so you can also check those videos and those playlists as well i hope that you enjoyed this video i know that i did it was a pretty a pretty bit long video i'm sorry for that but i wanted to give you all the information and then you can then choose what you want, what you what inspire you. And then if you actually got insp inspiration and you're going to be using some of the tips and tricks that we have been showing you today, then go ahead and tag me, you know, give a shout out to Jai's community. We are in Facebook, we are in Instagram, we're in, in everywhere, especially here. And if you're new into the family, then go ahead and to subscribe to our channel. In here in Jai's community, we're on Lifestyle channel, so we're always sharing something new. Every Tuesday, we share a new video. I mean, every week, you have a new video. And it's totally different because we are a Lifestyle channel, so we share from remedies, recipes, do-it-yourself, decor, gardening, health, whatever. You name it, and there's going to be something over here. Cat videos, hiki days, lots of stuff. So I love you guys so much. I love you, each one of you. If you're part of the community, thank you for being part of the community. You are all amazing. And if you're not part of the community, then go ahead and subscribe. Become part of the community. Like the video and share with your friends and family. See you next Thursday. Bye, guys. Enjoy the day and enjoy the miracles.